flying fortress arrives in New Guinea, bringing General Douglas MacArthur. The United Nations leader in the South Pacific is welcomed by the commanding officer of an American air base. Riding over roads that were literally hacked from the jungle, General MacArthur drives to the front. Inland, he sees friendly native carriers, protected by Australian troops, keeping open supply lines, bringing food, oil, and ammunition for Allied fighters driving against Japanese positions on New Guinea. At an advanced air base, the general meets some of the flyers who are constantly harassing enemy shipping. Even now, a giant B-24 is taking aboard a load of bombs as word reaches the base that a Japanese cargo ship is steaming off the coast. The crew is anxious to be off. Target sighted. Machine gunners ready. The big bomber roars down and rakes the ship from stem to stern. The second time over, bombs are on their mark, and the freighter is crippled by the explosion. Now, bound for home, the crew flashes the message, mission accomplished. trained as sentries are playing an important role in helping Coast Guardsmen patrol America's thousands of miles of shoreline. A full dress review marks the departure of the newest regiment of canine recruits assigned to active duty. Mounted and afoot, the Coast Guard keeps close watch over all beaches on the Atlantic and the Pacific. Chongqing, Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek attends China's celebration of United Nations Day. Young women trained as nurses and young men, typical of the new China, salute their popular leader. Portraits of President Roosevelt, Prime Minister Churchill and Premier Stalin carried through the streets of the capital testify to China's fighting spirit in the cause of the United Nations. General Stilwell, commander of American forces in China, Burma, and India, returns from conferences in Washington. Meanwhile, reinforcements arrive in India to swell the legions of United Nations forces massing in this far distant theater of war. More than 8,000 miles from home, American troops are making new friends among the natives of India. From an isolated outpost in the Indian state of Bengal, mule pack trains loaded with war supplies cross the wild barren trails of Tibet bound for China. So severe is the journey through the cold mountain passes of the Himalayas each mule can make but one round trip a year. The Allies are overlooking no routes of supply to reach the courageous people of China. The famous American scout car, known among United Nations armies as the Jeep, is tested by Australians over the toughest proving ground. The little motor car has four speeds forward and sometimes has four wheels in the air, all at once. Here's where cameraman and driver have a narrow escape. 
Nobody hurt, but too close for comfort. American-made tanks bound overseas. Embarkation port for armored juggernauts arriving from factories by the train load. Here, inspectors check and prepare the tanks for the climate in which they'll be used. With adhesive tape, every opening is sealed against the moisture of an ocean crossing. Expert women drivers give the tanks a final test before running them onto long flat cars which transport them to ships waiting in the harbor. Tanks bound for fronts wherever United Nations forces are fighting. In American shipyards, every day new keels are being laid to swell the tide of United Nations shipping. Workers have long since voluntarily changed from peacetime jobs to war jobs. Plants operate in three shifts, hum at top speed into the night, around the clock, 24 hours a day. Red hot rivets, burning through the blackest nights, write a message of defiance to the Axis. American workers are building the ships, and the ships are delivering the goods. <laughs> Flying high above a United Nations convoy somewhere in the Atlantic, Navy cameramen accompany patrol planes on the lookout for enemy submarines. Suddenly, a radar is sighted as it comes to the surface. By radio, word is flashed to an American aircraft carrier, and dive bombers are dispatched to the area. Guns blazing, the planes pounce upon the submarine before it can submerge. radar is sighted and depth bombs are dropped, damaging the craft so severely it cannot escape. A dramatic photograph revealing a bomb in midair as the raider's crew crouches on deck. to the bottom. 